Welcome to CIA News. I'm Madhuri Pernikar, your host for the broadcast and a conference producer at CIA News. This is a recorded session and will be available on our website, cionews.co.in, CIA News LinkedIn handle. This is an exclusive fireside chat powered by Avaya on transformation through customer experience. Businesses are built by the experience they provide, and every day millions of those experiences are delivered by Avaya. Avaya is shaping what's next for the future of work with innovation and partnership that deliver game-changing business benefits. Let's dive in and let me introduce my guest for today. He has over overall work experience of over 23 years in insurance, banking, and ITES sectors, including over 14 years in leadership roles. He has developed strategies, set up a large-scale customer service practices for financial service organizations. He has proficiency across functions, including business solutions and innovation, back office operation, underwriting, claims, customer service strategy, and delivery. Persistency and retention, branch operation, risk management, cross-selling and upselling, training and capability development, HR and custody service. He has been a part of private life insurance industry since inspection and also has experience in managing large team and diverse team impact cross-functional projects. Please welcome Ashish Rao, Exclude Executive Vice President and Head Customer Service and Operation at ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company. So it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much. It's, it's my pleasure to be present on this platform. Thank you for this opportunity. Welcome. And along with me today is Mr. Nilesh Marathi. He's a digital engagement solution sales leader at Avaya India and also a moderator for today's session. He has a rich experience of 17 years in contact center and unified communication with organizations such as Nortel, Microsoft and Avaya. Nilesh has a deep understanding of the Avaya engagement solution and has a great know-how on the customer's journey, mapping and diversing the digital transformation strategy. He also has led the way in digital. Welcome, Mr. Nilesh. Thank you, Madhuri. And uh, thank you, Ashish, for taking time out and being on the, this particular platform. Welcome. Thanks, Nilesh. Thanks, thanks. All right, so uh, let's start uh, our uh, discussion. Um, so, Ashish, let, let me start with, you know, we're all coming out of uh, post digital transformation and and that's uh, by none other than the pandemic uh, what uh, several customers are reporting is you know and our country was locked down virtually locked down people couldn't travel offices were shut but the business had to go on right and and obviously the digital uh, focus on the digital improved significantly uh, uh, during this particular time so from and i'm i'm sure insurance companies are at the for, forefront of leveraging digital so what is your experience how did you um, uh, leverage the digital channels uh, to focus on on the customer experience and also uh, focus on uh, your go-to market right during this period uh, now and I'm sure it will eventually continue uh, the same path so what's your experience like uh, on digital channels here? yeah so uh, actually uh, I would go back a few years because uh, way back in 2012 is when uh, our then CEO had uh, had this vision that we should be a technology company selling insurance and uh, i'm proud to say that we were the first insurance company within india to embark on the digitalization of our uh, of our uh, various services and processes and and that actually held us in good stead uh, when the pandemic hit us because on most of the metrics if you look at the life cycle of a customer from purchase till claims uh, most of the metrics were very high in terms of self-help or in terms of digitalization. So uh, for us, uh, it did not come as a shock. Uh, we were able to cut over from a fully full-fledged office working as on the 14th of March with uh, about a week's preparation uh, when the pandemic hit us and the lockdown eventually hit us on the 23rd, 24th of March. Uh, we were able to completely scale out into uh, working from home for any of not only our employees, but also for our partners. We work with a lot of partners who do a lot of outsourced work for us. It was like a seamless movement for us uh, when we did that because uh, I, uh, uh, I prefer to call it in some of the other interviews that I've given. People have asked me what's worked for you. I think it was somewhere a premonition 
that something like the pandemic is going to hit us on a lighter way but uh, the reality is that uh, we sort of knew that uh, if you look at the environment around us right people are getting influenced by the experiences they have with uh, uh, you know companies like amazon or uh, you know netflix and it doesn't it's not restricted to a particular category it's across categories uh, i mean who would have thought a year ago that ott would be such a big uh, uh, category by itself right and nobody today talks about any uh, people are very comfortable not going into a movie hall so essentially what is driving the customer behavior is actually the the surrounding and because the surrounding uh, around us is actually getting influenced by technology i don't think any company has a choice to say uh, you know it, uh, you can't be in a archaic age because the age every quarter technologies are changing nowadays so for, for from that point of view i think uh, coming back to your question uh we were very ready for it uh it took us about a week to just cut over because we had to ensure that people who were working on desktops had laptops or they could carry their desktops home and things like that but apart from that uh, uh we were very comfortable uh, whether it was our contact center whether it was our uh, our sales people we had to we created a uh, you know a, a collaboration platform for them uh, which is equivalent of what we are using today to have this interview but apart from that uh, i think it was like a seamless kind of a cut over for us from a, a overall uh, customer experience standpoint sure and just so you know just to put things in more little more perspective how much what percentage of the digital uh, of your uh, uh, the customer engagement has taken over in this period uh, compared to what it was earlier so uh, uh, it it's not increased too much because like i told you we were already doing it since 2012 but our uh, for example in our new business uh, uh, about 95 97% of the applications come in online digitally mm-hmm. uh, our self service is about 92% digital right uh, uh, and self service so it basically means that don't, people don't need to interact with anyone from the company collections uh, and uh, payouts which are critical from a uh, point of view of a insurance company uh, digital collections is somewhere in the range of 85 to 90% uh, which was in the 70s earlier uh payouts is close to 100% because uh, we prefer paying directly into the customer's account rather than issuing checks so uh, we close to uh, i mean for customer initiated payouts it's close to about 99.9% going through uh, uh, digitally so uh, for us honestly this this journey if if pandemic would have hit us uh, not that it should hit us ever but if it would have hit us 5 years ago maybe we would have been talking about being in the 40s 50s and going up to 90s but mm-hmm. we were already in the late 70s early 80s so going to the 90s was like a fuck really yeah sounds like you are already a mature organization from a digital adoption perspective so that brings me to uh, the, the next questions is uh, uh, given your maturity um, are, are you measuring your customer experience across specifically on the digital channels across all the channels or generally uh, How, how do you measure are, are you practicing it how do you measure it so that you know so the uh, the cx practitioners who would be watching this video uh, might want to uh, learn a trick or two from from you on this particular so on uh, on every uh, touch point or every place where the customer interacts with us as a brand uh, we have two or three mechanisms through which we uh, garner their feedback one obviously is uh, you know we have a transaction survey so mm-hmm. as and when a transaction gets completed or interaction gets completed there is a uh, uh, you know uh, based on that particular mode itself there is a uh, a questionnaire it's a, a one or two uh, question kind of a thing that is asked where we are getting the rating from the person so on the website it, it's it's on the web itself that you uh, website screen itself if it's a call then a sms goes out to the customer if it's the an email then a email goes out to the customer this is the standard uh, thing that we do for every interaction and we do get a fairly good response out there in addition to that we also do uh, uh, nps service uh, through a uh, independent uh, organization and uh, our uh, nps is uh, fairly good across the entire life cycle uh, our nps uh, uh, overall i mean across the various stages whether it is onboarding uh, renewals uh, uh, collections claims etc is in the uh, early 70s which by itself is a big number because as you know nps is basically promoters minus uh, the detractors so that's another mechanism that we use uh, apart from that uh, we use complaints as a very big uh, uh, 
a source of feedback uh, through which we uh, look at the improvements that can be done and and some of these things we do in terms of inducting customers who have complained if they are talking about a particular functionality for example and we are working on that functionality to be created sometimes we've inducted them as a part of the uh, user group who would do the testing so by making them a part of the solution it's easier to get uh, customers to sort of build loyalty with us so we use these three four methods to actually uh, you know gauge what customers have to say about us what they like what they don't like more importantly and and try and action them we have uh, two three uh, uh, internal committees as well which look at uh, committees or councils if you may call it that which constantly look at customer feedback uh, positive or negative and uh, look at ways by which we can keep improving it so uh, there are there is basically like a four fold kind of a uh, approach that we take uh, in terms of listening to customers acting on what they are telling us and then uh, making changes and improvements to uh, our offerings perfect perfect and uh, <clears throat> so uh, you know speaking about the the uh, customer experience as a whole uh, um, and and you, one thing that you mentioned is, is about tracking and measuring um I, do you do you uh, measure or track the customer interactions across the touch point do you or, or uh, do you track the customer journey how they do they interact with the organizations um uh, is there a, a it's it's a, it's a mad word out there right so is there a, i'm just trying to see if there is you have discovered a method to this madness because there's so much of data if i may answer your question i think we are just learn, we are learning because uh, changes of customers are are very frequent right so Uh, what we do is uh, we do track uh, the pattern of customers behaviors across various touch points so mm-hmm. for example if you have seen a customer who is uh, constantly interacting with us on the website which means he prefers self help right uh, an alarm bell for us is when he contacts a physical touch point like he goes to a branch or he writes an email or calls a call center that is like a alarm bell for us because that's how we track if the customer is showing a st- you know a steady state uh, wanting to interact digitally uh, wanting self service gets in touch with a physical touch point is a alarm bell because there is something wrong he is not mm. getting either he is not getting the information that he wants or there is some service that we have not yet enabled and we uh, ensure that such kind of customers are held uh, i mean the interaction with them is done by typically slightly senior staff who can understand and envisage what is required from them and, and that gets it fed into the councils that i was saying in terms of any changes that need to be done so we do track uh, behavior of customers whether it is a payment behavior whether it is a interaction behavior whether it is a transaction behavior as well so we look at uh, various points all through the life cycle understood understood and i'm sure now uh, uh, what's the role of analytics do you do you deploy any ai tools now this is an interesting thing that you said right if if customer goes through certain journey then that raises a flag or um, you know that you may need to get into it so um is, is it a workflow or you have uh, you are using analytics or some sort of ai uh, to discover uh, we have started use of ai in some of our other uh, processes but for this customer interaction piece uh, we use ai for uh, our bots uh, we mm-hmm. have a chatbot we have a, a chatbot on whatsapp as well so for mm-hmm. that we use ai but for uh, these kind of uh, uh, triggers in terms of a customer moving out of digital into physical etc we have a, a in house analytics team which is on the fly churning some of these and these are uh, interactions that they keep pointing us towards saying that this is a interaction to watch out for uh, we are left, we are trying to look at uh, various ways by which we can incorporate ai here as well uh, mm-hmm. which itself can you know uh, not only just replace the human element of it but it can uh, better us in terms of uh, some of those uh, you know the algorithms can actually self improve through machine learning etc through which we can uh, keep looking at customizing every interaction for the customer today uh, i if i have to put a number to it maybe about uh, 60 70% of our interactions would be customized so there is still that 30% where it is a generic kind of a interaction that we do mm. uh, our endeavor is to actually reach it close to 90% because if you ask a customer what does he want he doesn't care whether you uh, you know offer the same service to 10 other people if i am paying you premiums to uh, for my policy i expect you to give me a uh, customer service for me so if nilesh for example is a ipro customer i would want nilesh to get the experience that nilesh wants to have not something that ashish wants to give him so that's that's our endeavor so it's a, it's a long journey as you know ai is just 
uh, as we speak, it is uh, an ongoing, uh, developing kind of a journey. So uh, I'm sure right. if we do this discussion, maybe a year, two years down the line, there'll be a lot more uh, use cases of AI that we would have already used. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I completely agree with you. On so it it's just let me you know go through a little uh, slightly diversification. So. Um, you know, speaking about this, this technology is and, and technology plays, as you said, rightly said, plays a lot of role uh, in today's world, right? In in how businesses are run on on, on your go to market and and how you uh, engage with your customers, etc. Right. And and the way technology changes is is it your preferred model is like owning that technology, managing on your own, or uh, you prefer to go to cloud way are you so the question is are you ready for cloud um or you are already uh, embraced do you have already embraced cloud uh, in your we already embrace cloud for some aspects of it because uh, the reality mm -hmm. is that as an organization we also are uh, uh, you know getting attuned with the changing times uh, i think uh, uh, the way uh, 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 if you if you traditionally look at it, people would prefer building things on their own. Then they started looking at off the shelf and then customizations. But I think if there are services that are available on the cloud, which take care of what you want to manage and the good part about cloud typically is that you pay for use, right? Rather than uh, building something and then uh, uh, pushing the internal teams that are a drive usage so that you can get some ROI. I think cloud is a very safe kind of a concept because you get a multitude of options in uh, through which you can sort of manage your uh, uh, you know the technology interventions that you want to introduce for your own business it, the other advantage is from a cost point of view it's so initial investment is fairly okay but the thing is with paper use kind of a concept i think it's a big advantage for uh, most companies uh, even smaller companies for that matter who don't need to worry too much about uh, making huge investments in uh, this and and uh, you know because technology is so constantly changing, I think the uh, it's it's uh, somewhere. It's my personal view. It's I think uh, the time has probably now passed where companies will be thinking about building technologies on their own, unless they are a software company. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for uh, user companies like us, it doesn't make sense to look at uh, building our own technologies or even trying to customize too much because you today you have a multitude of people who offer the same service. You tell right. them what you want customized for you, uh, and they will do it for you. It's it's converse to the example that I was giving you, right? If Nilesh is a customer of iPro, he would want uh, his interaction with iPro to be customized to at least 90, 90 95 percent. It's the same with uh, us with uh, you know a technology company. That's what you would expect. You give me anything that's uh, on the cloud because I know on the cloud things will constantly change, and you'll be abreast with it, and I'll get the benefit of the cost as well. So. Absolutely, I think that, that that's a cue for me. <laughs> Take it as a feedback and input. Uh, thank you for that. Just a, you know, before we wrap it up, um, uh, just a last question. We are coming out of uh, pandemic, still pretty much into it, but now things are looking uh, looking up relatively. Uh, but in last year, you know, uh, we everyone were abruptly uh, moved to work from home, right? The uh, the employees, the business offices were shut. Public transport was shut, uh, and the, some of the challenges that some of our customers reported was like uh, uh, moving to uh, moving employees to work from home, especially in the contact center and customer-facing roles, was was easy. But the next challenge was uh, how do I know they are working? What was their productivity? Uh, the compliance they were handling the customer data. What about the compliance? What about the productivity? So did you go through that cycle? What was your experience, and how how did you uh, overcome that? So, uh, uh, like I mentioned, because some of these issues were things that we had probably uh, sort of uh, predicted might happen. Uh, see, uh, what are the most important two? What are the top three things that uh, you know companies had to cater to when the pandemic hit? They had to ensure uninterrupted service, mm -hmm. right? Which means uh, it should be as near to office as you work from home. Two is security of the data. Because uh, that's actually that that's the most uh, valuable commodity or invaluable commodity, if I may call it that, that we uh, that every company owns today. And thirdly, ensuring that compliance to uh, processes, regulations, etc., get taken care of. So when we looked at this entire thing, this is something that was uh, uh, brought out in one of our uh, uh, you know in in 
some about five six years ago, uh, we were looking at uh, looking at uh, some aspects of data security to be sort of taken care of. So at that point in time, especially for our outbound calling center, uh, which is uh, where we had to depend on companies that had dialers and those kind of aspects, we had built a command center, internal command center. Essentially, what it did was rather than depending on the CRM of the uh, outsource partner, we actually built the CRM ourselves, which was very easy for us to then connect with any kind of outbound dialer that the uh, service provider had. Mm. The facility was such that uh, when the call gets connected through the auto dialer, and and say I am the caller and I am calling Nilesh. Uh, once Nilesh is connected, I get to see the details of Nilesh's uh, policy at that point in time. I get the script also on the same page. I can run through the script, share the details that I want. Once the call with Nilesh is closed and I click submit, this uh, so this CRM is obviously ISS approved CRM. It's not the vendors. When I click submit, the next caller's uh, details uh, come up or the next uh, customer's details come up whenever the customer is connected. So in that way, we were trying to take care of the security angle, data security angle, right. uh, the uh, compliance to processes, and the connectivity uh, earlier itself. So like I said, those seven days that we took to sort of cut over was to ensure that the people were able to you know carry their uh, desktops or laptops back to their houses, check whether they had uh, you know proper uh, power connections, etc. At home because uh, our uh, service providers are spread across the country. We have people based in uh, uh, in Nasik, in Indore, in Bangalore, in Coimbatore, etc. Uh, given the fact that, you know, electricity is, is a question mark in some of these locations sometimes, we were actually trying to ensure that uh, they would have uninterrupted uh, power uh, supply, etc. So that's the time limit of, you know, 7 to 10 days that we took to sort of uh, migrate. But otherwise, most of the things already enabled with all these aspects of uh, technology, uh, you know, the, the safety, security of data, regulations, processes already inbuilt. So for us, it was not as much of a challenge as I guess some of the other companies sort of faced. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. You know, uh, it was a wonderful discussion and Thanks it was so great to have you on this platform. Uh, thank you so much once again. And uh, 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 Madhuri, I'll just hand it over back to you. Uh, well, thank you, Nilesh, for driving this session. And uh, thank you, Mr. Ashish, for some really good, great insights and sharing us your thoughts and views on this. Um, thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.